Hi guys, Stefan here back for the recipe of the week and this week we're gonna learn how to make a cheese souffle or more precisely one of the recipe that was kind of awarded in my recent appearance on television which is the twice bake cheese souffle with pancetta and thyme sauce. So let's not waste any time because it takes quite long to make and discover how to make that beautiful recipe. And now for the technical demonstration. Today we're going to see how to make savory souffle, more precisely twice baked cheese souffles. Now souffles, uh, they have to be cooked in the oven in a ramekin of any shape and size. It can be small, it can be big. Today I'm using these ones. Now when you make a souffle, it is very important to do things in order. It's not difficult, but you need to make sure to follow the specific steps to make sure you succeed, otherwise it can lead to disaster. So the very first step before you start anything, you have to prepare your ramekins. We usually coat the bottom of the ramekins first with butter. So you take like a paintbrush and you make sure you apply butter and everywhere, on the edges, absolutely everywhere inside to make sure it's, it's not gonna stick. And as a last tip, what you can usually do to make sure your souffle is gonna rise properly is you make stripes like this from the bottom of the dish towards the, the top, okay? So you make these lines. And this is to give your souffle some kind of rails, so to speak. So it's gonna rise with these rails. There's gonna be no, nothing stopping the souffle to rise very straight. That's very important. Second thing you're gonna do is to pour plenty of flour everywhere on your ramekin. But what you do, you take the excess in a dish first. You see there's plenty left and you do this. Very simple, and look at that. That's one of the ramekin done. So you're gonna repeat the process for all of your ramekins. I'm gonna use four of them today. That's the first step. Step number two, we're gonna be making the bechamel, which is the base in which we're gonna put our favoring for our souffle. So bechamel, we've seen that before. Huh? I'm taking a pan, medium heat. You start by making a white roux, which today I'm making with 25 grams of butter and 25 grams of flour. When the butter foams, put all of your flour in. And you can take a wooden spoon and immediately, like a roux, without coloration, you're gonna incorporate all of your butter with the flour. Okay, and you're gonna have that kind of compact mass. So remember for the roux, we're gonna leave this at very low heat and cook it for at least one or two minutes. Okay, after one or two minutes, you've got this. Remember, it's still white. We're doing this to remove the flowery taste. And then I'm pouring cold milk into my hot roux. Very important. It's either cold milk with hot roux or warm milk with cold roux. When everything is in, you put your fire, or your heat back to medium high. And you're gonna keep on stirring until everything is incorporated. Did I just say stirring again? I think it's stir, stirring. So before your mix boils, you add some salt, a bay leaf, and a pinch, or maybe two, of nutmeg. Back with your whisk, and very quickly, as you can see, do you see this? It goes thick very, very quickly. After 10 minutes, you try to fish out your uh, bay leaf, be careful not making a mess. Put it on there. Okay. You turn the heat off. And we're going to start to incorporate about 60 grams of cheese. So my bechamel is still very hot. And slowly, don't put everything. I'm going to incorporate my cheese. Make sure you mix well and make sure everything kind of melts before you put more. Now, if you found that there is some bits of cheese left in your pan, they're all not melted, put your heat back on a little bit and make sure you stir everything, not stir. And you need to have this, a very smooth mix. It's all white and there's no bits of cheese floating around or clumps, okay? When that's done, turn the heat off. Last step, we're gonna be incorporating the egg yolk. This has to happen off the heat, all right? You don't want this to cook. So I'm using two egg yolks roughly put them in there and that's gonna add some body to your mixture so your mixture is very very hot you're gonna incorporate the eggs and when this is done 
we're gonna leave it to rest while we're making the meringue or beating the egg white. You can also start to preheat your oven at 180 degrees Celsius right now. And now for the egg whites, very simple. You take the two egg whites we had from the two eggs with just a pinch of salt, not too much, and you're gonna beat them until firm. Done, when your egg whites are firm like that, they are done and we're gonna use them and make our mix. Finally, we can incorporate both the egg whites and the mix. So you start with your egg whites and you pour in maybe a quarter or maybe half of the mix and you're gonna slowly work your mix in a circular motion like that. You're gonna make the circles to incorporate gently your bechamel into your egg whites. As soon as you've done a bit, you can start to incorporate more. Mix again. And you're gonna mix making this circular motion until there's no more white tips. And that means that you can't see any of the egg whites being totally white. Everything has to be that kind of yellowish color. This is the result you should have. A nicely blended mix that's a bit foamy. It's now ready to be poured into the ramekins. All right, now you put your ramekins on a baking tray with one sheet of baking paper. You make sure your oven is, has been preheated before and you can now basically incorporate your mix. So I don't know how much I can fit in because they're pretty big ramekins. We just fill the mix all the way almost to the top. You leave a little edge on the side and make sure you clean the bits on there. And you repeat the same process for each ramekin. Finally, the last step before you're gonna put this in an oven for 25 minutes is to take a piece of paper. You can even use your finger, that's how they do it in the kitchen, and you go around the edge to remove any residue that could prevent your souffle from rising because that's gonna make a crust and it's gonna block the rise. Okay, so just a little clean and that's it. I'm gonna put this in the oven for 25 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Now that the souffle are in the oven, we can start the sauce. This is a very straightforward sauce. I'm using pure cream, but half a liter. I'm putting straight into a pan. I'm adding a little bit of salt, one or two pinches. You can correct the seasoning later. And for the flavoring to start off, I'm gonna start with some two branches of thyme. They're gonna detail, I'm gonna remove the little leaves individually and put them into my sauce. When that's done, I'm gonna bring the sauce to the boil. Now I did say that we're making a pancetta and thyme sauce, so the thyme is in. And now I'm gonna flash fry about four or five slices of pancetta. Okay, so very quickly. And when they're done, I'm gonna put them in my sauce. Done. Turning my heat off. And look at this, these lovely pieces of meat, the, there's just a hint of saltiness. I'm gonna put this in my cream in the back there that's boiling away. And while my souffle are being cooked, I'm just basically, I'm gonna switch over. I'm just reducing all this, and this is the secret of that sauce. It's a reduction of pure cream, thyme, and pancetta, and all of these flavors are gonna to mix together and come into harmony. And this is the sauce we're gonna use for a souffle. All right, so the souffles are ready after 25 minutes and as you can see, they're nice colored and they've kind of rise, but not too much. It flopped a little bit on the other side, so it's a bit of a challenge. So at this stage, you have made a cheese souffle. If you want, you can quickly drop this on the table for your guest and you're ready. Today though, we are going further because we're making a twice baked cheese souffle. And the beauty with that is that you don't have to worry about this thing going down and down in size because we're gonna bake them again. So the beauty of the twice bake uh, souffles is that as you can see here, they've totally dropped. And this does not matter because once they're out of the mold, you can basically keep them on the side for as long as you want, let's say, you know, one or two hours before your guest arrives. And only then when you are ready, you can just use them, dress them up for the final cook. Now let's try to see if I can remove this. So as you can see here, you see this little dry bit that has a touch. So I'm using a round knife and I'm gonna try to go around. And if we've done 
our diligence properly with the flour and butter, that should unmold. Yes. And then you got your souffle. And you can basically keep it for the second bake. So I'm gonna unmold the other one of the camera, but that's the idea for the souffle. And now for the second bake. So let's say your guests arrive, you've prepared your souffle, they've rested on the side, they even cold, it does not matter, you're ready to serve. So you take a bowl, I'm taking an ice bowl here. I've passed my sauce through a sieve to remove all the bits of thyme. So you start by putting a bit of sauce at the bottom. Then you take one of the lovely souffles. So I like to turn them, turn them upside down. Like that, like it's a, like a little island floating around. Maybe adding, you think you add a little bit of sauce on top to coat it nicely to make sure it doesn't dry up because dryness is the enemy of souffles. And finally, you add cheese everywhere. I'm using uh, cheddar today, by the way. You can use other cheese like Conte cheese or other French cheese, but a simple cheddar for that home recipe is perfect. I'm gonna now put this back into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice, crusty, and golden brown. And it's finished, guys. Finally, I get it out of the oven. Our little souffle have puffed up a little bit. And this is what we are getting. Look at this little bit. It is a bit overly cheese. I'm just gonna finish it off with, you know, bits and pieces of uh, pancetta. I'm a bit of a pancetta addict, to be honest. And perhaps, just for the sake of it, I'll put a little bit of time just to remind us this is a thyme and pancetta uh, souffle. But that's, that's it for the recipe. Before I'm going, I'm still going to try to tuck in. This is really, really hot. So here's the spoon and... Oh, look at that. This is creamy and delicious. Oh. Mm, look at this. Look at this inside. It's still very fluffy, very creamy. Mm. and very very cheesy but guys that's a good recipe to try at home Stefan here I'm out for the day if you have the time try it it's a really delicious recipe and I see you next time for more French food bye bye <laughs>